Okay, today, September 14th, we're going to be starting our forces unit. Um, we're going to have a quiz. Let's see, I see you guys today, Thursday. Um, yeah, I'll push it till next week because I want to have a little bit more time to talk about some of the homework. So, forces unit. So, let's first of all, force is an interaction between two objects. Force is an interaction between two objects. At some point in your life, you've probably been told that force is a push or a pull. And that's sort of true, but if you were to, to look at yourself or look at the desk or these various things, you wouldn't see me being pushed or pulled. Gravity is pulling me down, but you don't see a motion. It's not, it's not as obvious as some of the other forces. Unlike if I was to grab this chair and pick it up, you can see that as a push or a pull. But me standing on the floor, not so much. Um, the attraction between the earth and the sun. We know there's a gravitational attraction, but we don't see us moving closer to the sun or further from the sun, although we do orbit. Okay? So force is going to be any interaction between two objects. Okay? And there are four fundamental forces that we know of in the universe. in our universe as we understand it right now. Although we're starting to run into some problems with our understanding of things. So, the first force is called the strong force and is what holds the nucleus together. The nucleus of atoms together. We will talk about nuclear physics and atomic physics probably in the spring. Okay, won't do them this fall, but we will do those in the spring. And if this force was even one ten thousandth of a percent smaller, nothing you see would form. This number has to be correct to within eight decimal places of what it is. And if it's not, our, our, none of our universe would have ever formed. There would no be us, no us, no universe, no nothing, because atoms wouldn't happen. We wouldn't be able to hold protons close to protons. There are actually seven numbers in our universe that if any of those seven were off by parts per billion, that's billion, not million. If they were off by even one decimal place in the first 12 after the decimal, our universe would not form. So to say that we are serendipitously here is a pretty strong statement. What's that? More than strong Seren serendipity is when you have you discover something that you didn't expect or you find something you didn't expect. For example, whiteout. Whiteout was made by a woman who was trying to make a better glue for the office. So that would, you know, how we have posty notes with the stick sticky on the back, but they're not super sticky. She was trying to find something like that. She was working in, I want to say, the 60s. And she was trying to find a better glue, and she ended up inventing whiteout. Liquid paper. That's a whiteout name? So that's serendipity. Yes, that was his, that's one of its trademark names, is liquid paper. What's that here in the nucleus? Of, of atoms together. Holds the nucleus of atoms together. Number two, this one is probably one you're more familiar with, the electrostatic force, and it causes opposite charges to attract and like charges to repel. So, touch screens. Some of you have touch screens. Most of you probably have touch screen phones at this point. 
Some of you have computers that are also touch screens. Okay? Touch screens work because your skin is electronegative. Human skin is negatively charged because the human body processes all the chemicals that we process and it ends up stripping electrons and it ends up stripping more electrons than it does other nuclei. And so electrons, you know, probably are on the outside. So we're electronegative. <coughs> and um, hmm, do I have my speakers on? So Not loud enough. Or maybe not on even. You can hear it. Why are you not hearing it very loud? Uh, that buzzing. Sounds like my speakers are struggling. Anyway, um, normally you get a really big kick off of that. Let's see if I can. Okay. That's metal and metal. Can't hear mine today. Normally with me, you can hear this get nearly as loud as that. Okay? But if you touch something that's not metal, nothing. Nothing. What's but anywhere that? on your skin, you can do this at home. And I'm surprised how quiet it is because normally mine is really stinking loud. You know that when we touch in metal things, of course, you'd have conductors moving. My speakers have been acting weird, though, so that may be part of it. Um, so, your skin's electronegative, so your touch devices are set up to have a slightly positive charge, which would attract, right? Positives and negatives attract. And so, in essence, you're creating little tiny spaces of static electricity. Lightning being the largest version of static electricity that you can see. But in a lot of you, in the, in the winter particularly, you might be shushing across the floor in your sock feet and you get shocked by a light switch. You'll see me a lot of the times when I've been sitting in here during planning, if I have to touch this to shock it off because my skin does carry... I seem to have a little bit more than the ordinary charge on that. My dad does too, so... We're the people that will, you'll catch us at the gas station and we'll be the ones you hear on the news that caught on fire because we sparked off the gas fumes or something stupid like that. With just your hand. So, um, so I always ground myself when I'm pumping gas, obviously, in the winter. But um, the electrostatic force we're very familiar with for most of us. We've, we've learned about this one in atoms. It's why electrons orbit the nucleus and all these kinds of things. But it's slightly smaller than the strong force because the strong force, if you put all those protons together, they should repel. And they do repel, but the strong force is just a little bit stronger. So in order of strength, strong is the strongest force in nature, then electrostatic. The next one, you probably don't know. You know what it does, but you don't know why it does what it does. And like I said, we'll talk about this one later. The weak force... Weak forces are involved in nuclear radiation. So when an atom breaks apart and gives off nuclear radiation, the weak force is involved in that. And the last fundamental force is gravity. Um, in atoms, it is too weak to recognize. Too weak to see. And yet, <clears throat> gravity is acts over this huge distance because the sun and the earth are attracted to one another through gravity and the, the sun is 93 million miles away. In fact, it takes eight minutes for light to get here. An average of eight minutes for light from the sun. And the light goes 186,000 miles per second. That? Okay? 186,000 miles per second, and yet it takes eight minutes for the sun's light to get here. Which is to say this, if our sun was to burn out, 
we wouldn't know it for eight minutes. At least visually. And we'd know it later because attractive force being what it is, what would happen if, if you take a, something that's swinging around on a circle and you let go? The entire planet will, not just our planet, but our planet and moon are already moving away from each other, but all the planets will start to go whichever way they were going to start with. So our entire solar system would fall apart pretty much instantly. Yes, Jacob? Works to a... ...on a circle and you let go. The entire planet will... Not just our planet, but our planet and moon are already moving away from each other, but all the planets will start to go whichever way they were going to start with. So our entire solar system would fall apart pretty much instantly. Yes, Jacob? If it takes eight minutes, then why is it pretty much instant when like the sun starts rising? It's not. You're, you're looking at the sun from eight minutes ago, regardless of when you see it. Oh, so, always, just like the sun sets before you recognize it, it rises before you recognize it. And part of that is because of bending of light. We'll get to light stuff later. <coughs> but, strong force acts on tiny distances. Inside an atom, basically. Electrostatic works to a few centimeters to meters, depending on how big. Now realize lightning, of course, is epic in terms of how many charges that is. To give you an idea... I know that um, probably all of you at one time or another have shocked yourself or seen that little spark. If you're wearing layers in the winter and you pull off your sweatshirt in a dark room, you'll be able to see the lightning between your T-shirt and your sweatshirt. Some of you have seen that. Um, but that to spark, for you to be able to see a spark, like if I go to touch the light switch or you hear it click over here, it's about nine billion charges. That's a nine with nine zeros behind it to jump the gap in air. Air is a very good insulator. Yes, Jay. Hide in a ditch. That's the, the lowest place you want to get because it's hard for the air to get up under you as part of it. But there's, there's bigger things and I don't have time to do that today. I'd love to, but we don't have time to do that today. We can do that later when we get to it, I promise. So, strong force, little tiny, electrostatics can be big. Weak force, inside an atom. So you won't ever see a weak force in your daily life. And then gravity acts over universe size or s galaxy sized universe sized distances so it's kind of interesting that your strength of force is exactly the opposite of your distance that the force acts strong force being the largest force in nature but it acts over the smallest distances Gravity being the weakest force in nature, but it acts over the biggest distances. Yes. I have no desire to try that personally, but no, it's okay. So, enough with gravity. Now, the forces we're going to use, these forces go together to make what we call macro forces. The macro forces we'll use will be things like normal force, gravity, tension in a string, uh, restoring force from a spring, you know, a spring. And so applied forces, we'll talk about those when we get to them. But these are our, our four forces. And then what we're going to do for most of our objects this year is we're going to use what's called an object model. An object model... 
is used when the internal structure does not affect the answer to the question. So we'll get over there and talk about that. <clears throat> I'll give you a minute to write. Object model is used. So we have several models in physics. And the reason that you have a model is sort of to strip things down to a more basic thing. For example, let's say London is looking into buying a new car. Okay? And she just wants one that will run, that's reliable, and gets, you know, decent gas mileage. She can get that. There are lots of other things she might care about, right? But she's probably not going to buy the car and investigating things like the carburetor, the engine rods, the pistons. Probably not looking at the brake pads real close. You understand what I'm saying? All those things go into making up the car. A car is a complicated object. There's lots of internal pieces to it. But if she wants to buy a car, she's probably not looking at all of those factors. Most people don't look at all the individual pieces unless they happen to be buying used cars. And in that case, they might take something like something they can use to look inside the car, a flashlight, something small. They might ask the dealership if they could get it run by a mechanic to make sure that the car actually works like the dealership claims it works, right? Things we have to do when we buy cars. But if I want to know how fast the car is going, it's irrelevant all those parts on the inside. It doesn't matter. I can just treat the car as if it's a blob of mass in space. Or I can treat Alyssa like she's a blob of mass in space if she's running around a track. I don't have to know how the chemical processes inside her body, take the food she ate for breakfast and turns it into the energy she uses, right? It's a biology problem, so we don't care. So when we're talking about object model, we're treating objects, we're trying to simplify the problem. We're trying to make the process easy to deal with, and so we treat objects as if they're a single blob in space. Okay? The other models we use, we use con a con continuity model when we're working with fluids, and that means that we have air in our classroom, right? And we're all thankful for the traces of oxygen that are in the air because the first one, of course, is force due to gravity. Remember the the subscripted letters are our adjectives. So force due to gravity would be force for the G. You will also hear this called weight. Weight is the force due to gravity. Then there's going to be F with a T, which is a tension force. They transmit forces. Through ropes or strings. These are actually electrostatic forces, both of that one is. Force normal is the surface integrity. Integrity. Force. Normal means perpendicular. This sets the boundary. And I'm going to stop there because I know y'all are trying to keep up with my writing. And then I have to explain a little bit about what the normal force is and does.
Force, force tension, T. F subscripted T and F subscripted N for force normal. It is the surface integrity force. I'll give you an example of that. I'll actually give you lots of examples of that. Right now, I'm walking across the floor. Never in my existence have I walked across the floor and the atoms of my shoe intermingled with the atoms of the floor. Even if I sink in the mud, you still know where the boundary between shoe and mud is. That boundary is what I mean by surface integrity. You're not mixing your atoms. None of your butt atoms are currently inside the chair. None of the chair items are currently inside your butt. You have not, there's a clear definition of this is me and that's chair. The normal force is what creates that. It is an electrostatic force. And one of the things that my Physics 1 kids, the AP ones, like is that I, I can tell you this in all honesty. Well, you have never touched anything. Nope. Because all the atoms in your body have the electrons on the outside. And all the atoms of everything else in the world have the electrons on the outside. So what's happened is you smushed your electrons really close to the other thing's electrons. So you've never really touched anything. You've gotten within one nanometer. About one to ten nanometers is the closest you ever get. To which someone in AP Physics 1 almost always says, so you're telling me I can hit my little brother, sister, sibling, older brother, you know, pick your favorite sibling that you want to smack. I can hit him and then I can go say, but I never touched him. Yes, technically that would be true. Still impact. I am. Because you must be in contact with an object to have these forces. The other group is called field forces. And you probably know these. Gravity can be a contact force or a non-contact force. Gravity, electrostatic, and magnetic. I'm pretty sure those do not need to be defined. So right now, gravity is a contact force as well as a field force for me. I am in contact with the Earth, and yet gravity is pulling me down. And if it could, it would pull me into the center of the Earth. I'm not at the center of the Earth. So gravity, electrostatic, and magnetic are all your forces at a distance.